G'day, Michael from Ironbark Game Studio, and welcome to the tenth part of this tutorial series, which will cover rigging in Blender. This is a bit more of a technical process, and it involves creating a set of bones which form the skeleton of the character, and some additional controls to help move these bones during animation. So a rig is an easy way for us to animate the mesh of a character without having to actually touch the mesh or animate the vertices individually. A rig is comprised of a number of bones which the mesh or meshes will be weighted or attached to and a rig can have controllers or constraints assigned to inform how bones react to each other's movements. Jumping into Blender, to start off with we need to create the bone structure inside of the character. Rigging bones will typically appear in the same place as real bones, however we use far fewer and only in places that need deformation. We only also need to create half the skeleton as this can be mirrored to the opposite side which is going to save us a lot of work. Let's press shift A and we're going to come down to armature and that's going to add a single bone as part of an armature in the scene. To make things a bit easier to line up I'm going to have the armature selected and I'm going to go down to the object properties and then in the viewport display I'm going to tick on in front so that'll just render in front of the mesh. I'm also going to hide the coat as this is going to get in the way when we're trying to line up bones with the legs. So with the bone or armature selected press tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to select the bone here and I'm going to scale and line it up with the hips. So it's easiest to start with the hip bone because most of the bones are going to be attached to this point. Let's go into side view, S to scale down, G to grab, and let's position this where the hips will be. Also going to move the back a little bit because I want the bones to conform around where the spine of the character is going to go. So I'm going to hit E to extrude to create a new bone and I'm just going to work up the back of the mesh. One for the neck and then this one's going to be for the head. Okay, let's go to the front view and now we want some bones for the legs. I'm going to go shift A, that's going to create a new bone. Scale it down. And I want to rotate this the other way around. So I'm just going to go R, Y, 180. And this is going to make sure the bone goes downwards. So it starts at the top and then moves down. It's important that you get the direction the right way around. So this will sort of roughly line up with the hip. And we want to pull this bone down to where the knee is. Then we're going to hit E to extrude down the leg to about where the ankle is going to be. Might move these across just a little bit. We want to make sure the bones are nice and straight down the leg. Let's go to the side view. And this can go forward a little bit to where the front of the knee is. And then this one I want to bring back a little bit to where the ankle is. Screw this down. This will be for the foot. And then one more extrusion along the Y, and that's going to be for the toes. We're going to do a similar process for the arms now. So Shift A to add a new bone. Let's grab this up on Z. And let's rotate that on the Y by 90 degrees. Scale it down. Bring it in here. So this is going to be for the shoulder. And we'll extrude along the arm here to about where the elbow will be. And extrude to where the wrist is. And then one for the hand. Go to the top view to make sure it's all lined up. So this could go back a little bit. And now zooming into the fingers. So a little trick here so that we can actually line them up with the knuckles of the fingers. I'm going to turn on wireframe. So if we drop down here and we turn on the geometry wireframe there, we can actually see where our knuckles are. So we can actually line up the bones of our rig. So shift A to add new bone. Let's select that, move it across and rotate Y 90, scale it down. Move it into position. Let's 
Now we'll extrude them straight along the finger, along the finger. So E X E X extrude X. So again, just lining them up to where the knuckles are. Once we've done that, we can duplicate these bones here. So I'm just going to select them all. Go Shift D on the Y, and we'll just line these up a bit straighter. And of course, we want to pull these down to where the knuckles are. Shift D on the Y. And then one more finger. And of course, we want to make sure they're lined up from the side view or the, the front view rather, which they are definitely not. They are all the way down here. So let's grab them all on the Z and line them up. It's going to involve a little bit more sort of manual work because each of the fingers are a slightly different size. And I'll just bring these ones up a bit just so that they can form with the shape of the hand. And the final bone we need is for the thumb here. So let's just grab this one, go Shift D, and let's go to top view first and line it up. Extrude it twice down there. And then from the front view, again, let's just make sure it's all nice and lined up. And now comes the arduous task of naming all of our bones, which is very, very important. So you cannot miss out on this step. So we have our armature here inside of our outliner. So if we just open that up, we have an armature object inside of that. We can open that up and we have all of our bones. So if I just hold shift and click on that little down arrow, that's going to open up all of the bones, even if they're a child of another one. So going through all these bones, we can just select them and we can name them. So double click, and this one is the hips, moving up the spine, spine.01, spine.02, spine.03. And then this one is the neck. And then the one at the top is the head, moving down the leg. And on the end of the bones, which we want to mirror, we have to do dot capital L. So upper leg dot L. That means when we mirror it, it's going to be copied as upper leg dot R for the right side. And then this bone is the palm dot zero four dot L. And then moving down the finger, we'll just name them as the actual finger. So we go F for finger underscore pinky dot zero one dot L. And we can just co copy this with control C, control V. This is pinky two. And this is pinky three. All right, excellent. So that is all of the bones named. Um, by the way, if you wanted to get to the bone properties, that is this button down here where you can also name them. So now I've got to parent our bones so that they actually follow each other correctly. So I'm going to start off with the leg here. And I might just also turn off the wireframe so it's not so much in the way. And I'm going to select the upper leg first and then shift select the hips second. I'm then going to go control P and for the parent, I'm going to go keep offset. It's going to create this little dotted line connecting the leg to the hips. I'm going to then come up to the hand. I'm going to select the thumb dot zero one along with all of the palm bones and then shift select the hand last control P. 
keep offset. And then I'll go to the shoulder, select the shoulder first, select the spine, dot zero three, control P, and keep offset. So now we can test this out in pose mode. So this has been edit mode where we've been adding and moving the bones around. If we hit control tab and then choose pose mode, this is where we can actually move the rig around. So if we grab the shoulder, for example, and we hit R to rotate, we can rotate the whole arm. You can see that the fingers are following along now with the hand bone. So if I, so if I select the hand, press R, the fingers rotate along with the hand. If I grab the hips, pretty much everything's parented to the hips at the moment. So if I press G to grab it, the whole rig moves with the, with the hips. If you move anything out of position, so move or rotate it like that, you can press A to select everything, press Alt R to reset the rotation and Alt G to reset the location. So I'm just going to hit Control Tab to get out of pose mode, select the, select the rig again, just hit Tab to go back into edit mode. So now we're going to set up a little bit more complexity in the rig to make it easier for us to animate it. And an easy way to animate something is by setting up inverse kinematics. So at the moment, if I head back into our pose mode actually, we could animate this with forward kinematics. So if I wanted to say move the leg upwards, I would have to grab the top bone first, rotate that, select the next bone down, rotate that, select the next bone down, rotate that, etc. With inverse kinematics, we can just grab the foot bone and move the whole leg without having to move any of the other bones in it. And that's going to make it a lot easier to animate. It's also going to make it a lot easier to line things up. So back into edit mode, I'm going to set up the IKs for the foot first. So I'm going to select the lower leg dot L down here. And I want to grab the, the head bone uh, down there. I'm going to go into the side view just to make things a bit easier. And I'm going to hit E and Y to extrude it along the Y axis. Going to select this bone now. Uh, I'm going to go to the bone properties down here. And I'm going to rename this to leg underscore IK for inverse kinematics dot L. I'm then going to untick deform. This is not a deformation bone. It's not actually going to affect the mesh. It's going to affect other bones. Then going to hit Alt P and I'm going to clear the parent. So it's now no longer connected to the leg bone. We just needed it in this uh, specific position. Now going to select the tip of the upper leg bone here. Going to extrude it along the Y axis. Select it. And I'm going to rename this to leg underscore PT for pole target dot L. Again, this isn't a deformation that won't affect the mesh itself, just the rig. And once again, I'm going to go Alt P to clear the parent. And with the pole target for the knee, I need to actually bring this out a little bit. So I'm just going to go G, Y to grab along the Y axis. And I'll sort of bring it out about half a meter from the leg. So now we have an IK bone along with a pole target bone. We can create a constraint so the leg follows the IK and also remains in line with the pole target. First though, we need to quickly recalculate the local orientation of each bone so that they are all consistently facing the same direction. So just as an example of the orientation of the bones, if I click on this object data properties here, uh, and then I go into the viewport display, I can then click on the axis, and that's going to show the direction that the bones are facing on these axes. Now we want them all facing in the same way, and it's just gonna make it a bit easier for us when we're trying to parent things together or create constraints that they are all locally in the same direction. So I'm going to go A to select all the bones, I'm then going to go Shift N, and I'm going to click on Global plus Z axis. So this is going to reorient all the bones on the positive Z axis. And we can see all the local axes um, change there. I'm then just going to uh, turn this off so it's not in the way. And now I'm going to go into Pose Mode. So Control Tab, Pose Mode. I'm going to select the leg IK bone first, and then Shift Select the lower leg. And then going to hit shift i and it's going to add an ik to active bone 
the active bone is going to turn uh, yellow. And then I'm going to go into the bone constraint properties down here and adjust some of these settings. So the pole target, if I just click on this eyedropper, I'm going to select the armature first and then the bone. I'm just going to type in PT for pole target and it's going to be the leg PT.L. It's going to make this go a little bit wacky here. So I'm going to set the chain length to two. So it's going to affect two bones up. And then I might just need to re-rotate the leg so it's facing forward. So this pull angle, I'm going to set this to 90 degrees. So it's facing forwards. And this might change for you. Uh, it might depend on the local orientation or the position of the bones. And now we can have a play around with the leg IK. So if I grab this bone down here and press G to move it, when I move this controller, it's going to move the two bones above it or the leg. What's really cool is if I grab the hip bone and grab that down, the leg's going to bend as it moves down. So you can really easily animate uh, the character squatting or bending down without having to actually touch the legs. Obviously we do have a problem though, that when we move the character down, it does rotate the foot here. Um, and we will be putting a little bit more work into the foot. So I'm gonna go back into edit mode, so hitting tab. And I need a new bone, so I'm gonna go shift A. And I want this bone to be rotated completely flat on the grid here. So I'm gonna press period, and I'm gonna change the pivot point to the 3D cursor, which is in the center of the scene. If your 3D cursor isn't in the center of the scene, just press shift C to uh, reset it. And I'm going to rotate this bone on the x-axis by 90 degrees. I'm also going to scale it down. I want this to be roughly the same size as the foot. And I'm going to move it back to about here. And then from the front view, I want to move it directly um, beneath the, the leg bone. So what I might do instead is I'll come up here and set the snapping to vertex. Press G, X to move it on the X axis, hold down control, and then snap it to the bone there. So vertex snapping is also going to work on bones as well, which is really handy. Once again, I'm going to go into the bone properties. I'm going to rename this bone here to leg underscore underscore control control dot L and untick to form. I want another bone in here, so I'm going to go Shift A, select it, rotate X 90, scale it down. And this one is going to be called Root. So the Root bone is going to be like our master controller, and when we move this bone, the entire rig is going to move with it. It is also a non deformer, and once I've added it in, I can just press comma and set my pivot point back to median point. So now I've got to do a bit of parenting. So I'm going to select the leg uh, IK.L here, and then I'm going to shift select the foot control dot L, and then control P parent keep offset. Then I'm going to select the foot control. I'm going to select the leg pole target up here, and then I'm going to select the root bone last, Hit Control P, keep offset. So now if we go into pose mode, if we grab the root bone, all the bones are gonna move with it, but I made one mistake. I forgot to parent the hips to the root bone as well. So I'm just gonna go back into edit mode, select the hips, shift select the root bone there, Control P, keep offset. And back into pose mode, if I grab the root bone, now everything moves with it. If I grab the foot controller, then the leg is going to move with that foot controller. Again, we've still got the uh, the rotated foot. We will fix that. And if I grab the uh, pole target here and move that from side to side, that is going to angle the knee. So the final foot controller we're going to make uh, is a foot roll. This is very common for animating in rigs. It really helps with animating stepping. So I'm just going to hide uh, the body low mesh. So we've just got everything out of the way. Uh, let's just hide those and those. 
and we'll just jump back into edit mode so we can just see the bones here. And I'm going to press Shift A to create a new bone. And let's just uh, scale it down. And I need to perfectly align this bone with the toes bone. So let's select the base, but first press G, hold down Control for vertex snapping. Snap to that point. Select the top. G to grab. Control to snap. And snap it there. Uh, it looks kind of wonky though. The rotation's a bit off, so I'm going to reset the rotation. So Shift N, global plus Z axis. Now that's perfectly aligned with our toe bone here. I'm going to go into the bone properties. I'm going to call this one toes underscore control dot L. I'm going to untick deform with the toes control still selected. I'm going to shift select the leg control dot L. So this one down here and press control P and keep offset. Deselect those now. I'm going to go shift A to add another bone. And again, using snapping, we're going to line this up with the foot. However, we're going to reverse the head and tail of the bone. So the head here, I'm going to press G to grab, control and snap it to the tail of that one. I'm going to grab the tail and then snap it to the head. Select the bone, shift N, recalculate, recalculate the rule on the global positive Z. And we're going to call this new bone foot underscore roll dot L, untick the form, and then I'm going to select the leg underscore IK first, then I'm going to shift select the foot roll second, control P, and we're going to go connected this time, because it's along the same uh, chain length, then I'm going to select the foot roll first, shift select the leg control second, control P, keep offset. So we should see all of our new uh, controls in here. So our leg IK, which is the child of the foot roll. Then we've got our toes control here. And that along with the foot roll is a child of the leg control. Okay, next step, we've got to go into pose mode. So control tab, pose mode. And I'm first going to select the toes control uh, dot L. So if I can't grab it in here, which I managed to do, uh, we can just come into the armature, open this up, and we can find the toes control uh, in there. With the toes control selected, we're then going to select the toes bone. So let's just hold down control and click on the toes in here. Then I'll go shift I to add an IK in the bone constraint properties here. I'm going to set the chain length to one. That should put that back in the uh, original position and then untick use tail. Still in pose mode, I'm going to deselect everything and then just select the toes control first. And then I'm going to select the toes.l second with control in the outliner. And I'm going to press shift control C. And I'm going to add a constraint and that's going to be the copy rotation. So in the bone constraints, we can see we've got another one down here. Instead of an IK though, this is, a, this is a copy rotation and we don't need to adjust any of the settings in here. However, we rotate the toes control, we want the toes to follow along. So if we try out our rig now, if we grab our foot control and we press RX, that is going to rotate it up onto the, uh, the toes, like the, the ball of the foot there. If we grab our toes control and rotate that, that's just going to rotate the toes uh, regularly. If we grab the foot controller and move this up, we can see that our foot is still, is now flat on the ground. The foot doesn't sort of rotate down as we move this controller around. And we can see our hips are still working if we bring them down. And that's all working really well. Alrighty, so one final control we are going to add is to the finger joints. So. When animating, uh, imagine if we had to rotate every single finger individually. Uh, that would be an absolute nightmare considering how many bones we've got in here. Uh, what we want to do is add constraints so that when we rotate one of the fingers or the, the finger closest to the, the palms, that's going to rotate all the fingers down the chain. So we only need to rotate one finger to rotate all of them along the same chain. 
it's going to be a lot easier to sort of clench fists or make the character grab things. So let's select the finger index uh, dot zero one there, and I'm going to shift select finger index dot zero two. Then I'm going to go shift control C, and I'm going to go copy rotation like we did with the toes. And for the copy rotation, we're only going to set the axis to the x axis. So deselect the y and z. So we, we only really want to rotate the bone in the one direction. It's going to be a little weird if we rotate it sort of side to side. And this is going to be based on the, the local rotation of the finger bone. So remember when we recalculated the roll, if we recalculate it on a different axis, we'd probably have to change the axis here. We're going to change the mix from replace to add. So that means the finger bone above it isn't going to completely replace the rotation. It's going to add to it so we can still rotate the bones down the chain. They're not being completely taken over by the one above it. And we're going to set the target from world space to local space and the owner from world space to local space as well. Now we've got to repeat the steps for all of these fingers. So for the index finger, I'm going to select the number two bone, shift select the number three, shift control C, copy rotation, deselect the Y and Z, set the mix from replace to add, and then world space to local, owner to local. So I'll just go through that all now. So now let's just test each of the fingers to make sure that they're curling properly. So, so select this finger here, press R, rotate it on the, the Y, and we see that's rotating and sort of curling up nicely. Rotate Y, Y, Y. Um, because this is the local X, if we hit R and then double tap X, and that will rotate locally on the X, which is the orientation of the finger. And if we select all these, uh, double tap X, they should all rotate like so. We can also add one to the thumb. I don't like going all the way up to the thumb because the thumb has uh, quite a bit more range or motion. Um, I might just go the, the tip of the thumb. So shift select the bone above, shift select the tip of the thumb, shift control C, copy rotation, and we'll set it to the, uh, the Z axis, uh, add local and local. So when we sort of rotate that around, that sort of rotates inwards a little bit. Um, but again, even if we rotate this, uh, we can come in here, select the tip, and then just override it by rotating it. Okay, let's work on some arm kinematics now. So I might just hide all of the other the meshes in here. So just run down here and the, the hide buttons there. Cool. You don't necessarily need inverse kinematics for the arms. Can be useful, can kind of get annoying or in the way sometimes, just kind of depends on the, the animator and what they prefer to do. We're going to add some arm kinematics for our hand so that when we move um, bone around the hand, it'll move the full arm. Can be useful for lining things up like grabbing weapons or two-handed things. So hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to select the hand bone in there. I'm going to go shift D and then just right click to duplicate the bone, but keep it in the uh, original position. I'm going to go into the bone properties down here. I'm going to rename this to arm underscore IK dot L. And of course, untick deform. With the arm IK still selected, I'm going to press Alt P and clear parent. And then going to come to the bone tip of the upper arm here. And let's just go into top view, so I'll press numpad seven and extrude on the Y, going backwards this time. Going to rename this new bone to arm um, underscore PT dot L, PT pull target, arm tick to form, and then hit Alt P, clear parent. And like the knee, we need to grab this out along the other uh, Y axis. Going to grab my two new bones, so I'm just going to make sure I grab the uh, the arm IK in there, as well as the arm um, hold target, and then press Shift N, 
and recalculate the roll on the global positive z-axis, then I can press Control tab and jump into pose mode. I'm just going to select the arm IK first, and then shift select the lower arm second, shift I, add an IK to the active bone. Now we can go into the bone constraint properties down here. Similar to our leg, we need to select our pole target, so just choose the armature. And for the bone, I'll type in PT, um, arm underscore PT. It's going to make things go pretty crazy. So let's set the chain length to 2. That should put everything back to where it was. It has rotated the hand around, so I'm just going to type in 180 to rotate the hand around 180 degrees, back to where it was before. And then finally, I'm going to head back into edit mode. I'm going to select the arm PT first, and then the arm IK second. Hit Control P, keep offset. And this is going to ensure that when the hand control moves, that the pole target uh, follows along with it. And it's going to make things uh, a fair bit easier to uh, manipulate. So it's getting pretty close. If we go into pose mode, uh, and if we grab our hand controller, or our arm control there, press G to grab, we can see that's moving the whole arm around. Um, but if we rotate it, it's not really kind of rotating the way that we want. It'd be good if this could rotate uh, the hand around, whereas it's just rotating the, uh, the pole target there. And the other thing too is if we move the hips, the arm doesn't follow along with it. So I like to have my hand or arm controller parented in a way so that it does actually follow the, the rest of the body. So in edit mode, I'm going to select the arm IK first. I'm going to shift select, uh, not the arm, shift select the shoulder second. Control P, and I'm going to go keep offset. So when I rotate the shoulder, it's also going to rotate the controller down here as well for the arm. It's also going to make sure that the hand isn't left behind when the rig is moved. Then I'll jump back into pose mode, control tab, pose mode, select the arm. Okay, first, and that's going to be hidden um, beneath the shoulder now. Let's just uh, hide these. There is arm, um, okay, so that's now a child of the shoulder. Then I'm going to select the hand dot L second. Control click in there, and then Shift Control C, copy rotation, and we'll just leave the default settings here. So now, if we grab the arm IK, press G to grab, that moves it like before. If we hit R, that's going to rotate the hand as well. So if I double tap R, I can get into the uh, the trackball rotation, which is pretty nice. We can use this pull target to affect the angle of the elbow. And then if we rotate the shoulder, it's going to rotate the whole arm. And if you don't like the way that the arm IK rotates the hand, you can always select the hand and you can bring the influence of that copy rotation down to zero. So zero means that rotating this, uh, rotating the controller won't rotate the hand, just the hand will, uh, just the hand bone will rotate the hand. If we bring this all the way up to one, that means we can't rotate it with the, the hand bone, we can only rotate it with the arm um, controller there. And you could actually toggle this on and off um, by any keyframes in the animation as well. Because we've been playing with this a little bit, I'm just going to go A to select everything, Alt R, reset the rotation, Alt G, reset the location. So everything's working pretty well now. But the, the one thing is visually, it doesn't look particularly nice. It's hard to know which controller to grab to move what. Um, all the controllers look like bones, so if we get in here, it's hard to actually grab the, the controller that we want. Um, so this is where we can add custom shapes and colors to the bones to better inform the animator how the rig works. Once we've added these custom shapes to the controllers, that's when we can mirror the rig to the other side. So I'm going to go into object mode, so just control tab out of that. I'm going to bring my meshes back, so we want to see how the meshes look um, in relation to the controllers. There we go. And I'm going to go shift A, and I'm going to go empty. 
and in here I'm going to choose cube. Let's just scale this down a little bit and uh, move it out of the way. It doesn't actually matter where it is located um, in the scene. And I'm going to create a new collection for this cube. So this collection I'm going to con I'm going to call controllers. I'm going to put my empty inside that controllers collection and we'll call this cube controller. If I then select the rig and go into pose mode, control tab, and I select the foot controller down here and I go into the bone properties here in viewport display we've got a custom shape with a custom object down here we can either type in the name here or we can use the eyedropper to select the cube controller in the scene and now that bone turns into the shape of that controller we can now just adjust some of the properties down here so the scale translation and the, the rotation And the idea here is to sort of line up the controller around the area of the part of the mesh that you're controlling. So, uh, for example, we have the, the foot here. So we want our controller to be roughly around the outside of the foot. So that when we grab this controller, it's really obvious what it's actually controlling. So back in object mode, I'm going to add a new empty with a circle. And uh, let's just rotate that on the X by 90 and scale it down. Move on the Y and Shift A, empty. The other one we want is a sphere. And you can use whatever shapes that you want. Basically, the idea is to make it as easy as possible for the animators to know what they're grabbing and controlling. So let's just add these. Oh, they've already been added in the controls, which is handy. Uh, let's just call this circle controller. And uh, this one we can call sphere controller, like so. Uh, and now we can just assign these three shapes to all of the controllers of our rig. So select our rig again, control tab, go into pose mode. And for example, I'll select the, uh, the pole target for the knee here. And for the custom shape, I'm going to select the sphere controller there, turn that into a sphere. And we'll just adjust the settings. Um, if you left click and drag down, you can select multiple um, attributes. I'm going to go 0.2. So we can change all three at the same time, like so. And then say for the hand controller, just got to make sure you select the correct one in there. So just to double, just to double make sure, we'll grab the arm underscore IK there. Uh, we'll set the custom shape to the cube and we'll adjust its settings. And now it's just a matter of going through the other controllers and adding in the uh, the custom shapes to them. So I'll start off with the uh, the pace here. So for the master controller, I'll go for the the circle for this one. And one other thing I might do is I might just go into the the object data properties here, and I'll untick in front so that the, my bones are no longer being rendered in front of the the mesh. Uh, and that's going to make it easier to see whether or not the controllers are in a good position. So we want the controllers to be able to be selected uh, when we don't have the in front um, turned on. So we can easily select the foot there. We can select the, the hand there. And yeah, now we'll just go through and select all the other controllers and add in our custom shapes. So toes control in there. Grab our foot roll in there, and currently it's at the uh, the base of the uh, the bone there. We want it up here where it actually rotates from. So move it around there, and we also want to rotate it so it's sort of nicely fitting around the the ankle. Now some bones don't actually have controls associated with them, so we're just going to add the the visual directly to them. If you press Alt Z, you can get a, a see-through version of our rig. So instead of having to tick on uh, in front, we can just go Alt Z uh, to turn on X-ray. We can select the hips, and I kind of want a, a square for the hips, so I'm going to use the, the cube 
to uh, just sort of flatten it out. And then for the spine bones, I'll be adding the circle controllers. We'll want to add the circles for the neck and head as well. And just to uh, rotate them so they're, they're nicely straight. We'll use the circle again for the shoulder. The arm pull target, we'll use our sphere again. And now we need to do all of the fingers. Again, these are just going to be circles. So the size of the bone is going to affect the relative scale of the controller, so each bone is going to be a little bit different depending on how big it is. So you can see for the pinky we need to make this one a little bit bigger than the other ones. Okay, I'll just uh, hit Alt Z to get out of X ray. And I'm just going to have a look at all of my controls and make sure that they're all easily accessible uh, when we're not using X ray. Just grabbing them, making sure that we're not actually going to uh, sort of select anything around them like the mesh. Already, and I think that's looking uh, pretty good there. So I'm just going to uh, hide my controls there. Uh, we can disable the whole collection and it's still going to appear um, representing our controls here. So these can, they can just be um, hidden away, that's all fine. And I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. Um, and then you'll notice that the, the controls only work once you're in, in pose mode or if you're out into uh, object mode there. So when you're in edit mode, you can still work on them easily. Um, and one other thing to note, in the viewport displayed, you can click on hide to, uh, to hide the bones themselves. Or you can click on the, uh, the object art properties and then untick show shapes and that will hide all of the, um, the shapes and just see the, uh, the bones in there. So tab to go into edit mode. And I might just go in front so I can see uh, through again. Maybe press A. To select all of the bones and then I'm going to go to armature and select symmetrize. Uh, assuming we've named everything correctly this should all work perfectly fine. And there we go it has duplicated all of the bones on this side that have dot L in their name it's copied across to the other side and it's renamed all of those bones to dot R. So the leg control dot R, pose control dot R, footroll.r and if we have a look in our pose mode 
all of those uh, bones, they have all of the associated constraints as well. So you don't need to add any of the constraints again. And uh, now you just got to test to make sure it all worked properly. So just uh, grabbing the controllers, making sure that the, the IKs are working. That one's working down there. Let's copy it across the other uh, foot roll. Okay. Hips, they're working okay. Uh, so it's all looking good. And the master controller, yep. Awesome. We are almost done. There's just one more thing we can do to make things look even better. So uh, let's just go to our armature and untick in front and then open up the bone groups um, tab here. And we're going to create three bone groups. So I'm going to click on the plus three times. This first group I'm going to call left. The second one I'm going to call right. And the last one I'm going to call center. And for the left bone group, we have a color scheme which we can assign. So I'm going to open up the default colors here. And for the left, I'm going to choose blue. For the right side, I'm going to set this to red. So red for right, I suppose. And then the center colors, I'm going to choose a yellow. Now I've got to assign the bones to these groups here. And let's just uh, control tab to go into object mode, select the armature and press forward slash to isolate. And then control tab again to go into pose. Let's grab all of the controllers on the right side. I'm not going to select um, the non-deformer. I'm not going to select the bones uh, which don't have controls on them. Just going to select the controls and bones with controls on them. And for the right side, I'm going to select the right bone group there and click on assign. They're all going to turn red. And I'll select the ones on the left hand side there, just deselect those are uh, those bones there. The foot controllers and grab the left bone group there and click on the sign so those bones turn blue. And for the center, it's going to select all these. And center and assign the yellow. And I forgot to assign that pole target to the left group there. So red for the right, yellow for the center, and blue for left. Pretty conventional in uh, 3D animation, so we are just going to stick with convention. Uh, if we really wanted to, we could select the bones uh, which we don't have any control over. So no matter how much you want to sort of rotate one of these bones, it's probably not going to do anything. And even if it does, you don't really want it to do anything. Uh, we can just select these ones and press H to hide them if you want. Um, and that might make things a little bit easier uh, when you're animating. Um, I'm just going to hit Alt H to unhide those because we will need these bones in the next step when we do our binding. But for now, that is the end of the tutorial. So I'm just going to go out of uh, post mode, forward slash to bring everything back. And uh, there we go. We have a rig for our character. The rig is going to serve us very well when creating poses and animations for them. Uh, rigs can be considerably more complex depending on the level of fidelity that you want to achieve in a game. Um, for example, think about all the extra bones required to rig a face. We are not going to do facial animation, that is a whole other process involved in that. Um, but the next step for us now is to bind the mesh of the models to the rig, so that the rig can actually move the character. This will involve a process called weight painting, uh, where each vertex is influenced by a certain percentage from each bone. Thanks for watching the video. Please like and subscribe if you found it useful. You can check out our Patreon link in the description with a variety of rewards such as starting files, tutorial notes, and early access to the rest of the series. And I'll see you in the next one.